on a night like any other. Bob Sajanowski explains that the streets of Brooklyn are not safe at all. All the money here passes from hand to hand until it reaches a drop bar, which is a random place chosen to be the safe deposit box for the entire city. Even the owners don't know when their bars will be the new drops, they just have to accept the money without asking questions. Bob explains that his job is just to stay at the cousin Marvin's bar and wait. On a new night, a group of men toasts for an old friend who went missing, named Richie Whalen, with a drink on the house, something that Marvin, the former owner of the bar doesn't like, because Bob is a nice guy and he allows many people to stay at the bar, drink and smoke even if they can't afford it, like these guys, and also this old woman named Millie. Despite being involved in bad things, Bob has a kind heart, he attends church regularly, and gets along well with people. One night, as he walks along in the streets, he hears something in the distance, but can't figure out what, and on a closer inspection, he notices that a small boxer puppy is crying desperately and bleeding in a trash can. Upon rescuing it, Bob meets the house owner, and although he explains the situation to her, she is scared of a man's presence in her yard. After taking his picture for her safety, the woman introduces herself as Nadia and invites Bob inside. They treat the puppy's wound, and Bob learns that Nadia is a waitress but has worked as an animal rescuer some time ago. She clarifies to Bob that the puppy is not a boxer but a pit bull, a breed of dog that is difficult to find a home for. Bob has the same thought as the other people, that pit bulls are a dangerous breed, but Nadia explains that their bad reputation is mostly their owner's fault. Amid the conversation, Bob notices some marks on Nadia's neck, but she immediately changes the subject and offers him a crate for the puppy. She can't keep the puppy because she works at night, and Bob clarifies that he can't keep the puppy either, as he was just passing through. Nadia reveals that the puppy will be taken to the shelter, giving a week for the owner to show up, otherwise, it will be put up for adoption. Although Bob is reluctant to take the responsibility, he asks Nadia to keep the puppy for a few days so he can think about it. He later talks to Marvin about it. Marvin tells him that it's just a puppy, and it will not be difficult to take care of it. After a regular night at the bar, a couple of masked crooks burst in after everyone had left, demanding the day's money. Marvin tries to talk with them, but they are very nervous to talk. Meanwhile Bob notices something about the watch one of them is wearing, as it seems to be stopped at a specific time. After getting the money the robbers leave, while Marvin and Bob goes to see Rardi, the bar's doorman, who was lying severely wounded. Later, Detective Evandro Torres appears, introducing himself as one of the guys who always sees Bob at the church. Evandro investigates what happened, and Bob tells him about the stopped watches they were wearing, and also comments that only the money from the register was taken, with no mention of any other illegal activity. In their casual conversation, Evandro mentions how he has noticed that Bob never takes communion during Mass in the church, but Bob is defensive, saying that it's his own business. As Evandro leaves, Marvin criticizes Bob for giving Evandro a clue about the watch thing. Bob thinks that the crooks just took them for 5000 and so they should not worry much about it, but Marvin corrects him as the bar owners will want the money back sooner or later. The following day, Bob is the first one to arrive at the Mass, and after that, he goes to Nadia's house to pick up the puppy. She hands him a bowl and some food for the puppy and then he leaves, but he returns a few seconds later to nervously confess to Nadia that he has never owned a dog before. Together they go shopping, and Nadia explains the basics to him, and when it comes to naming the dog, Bob names it Rocco, after seeing a statue of Saint Rocco in the church this morning. As he drops Nadia off at her house on his way home, a mysterious guy watches them from a distance. Bob do some changes in his house for the dog, as now the two will live together. Back at work, Chavka Yumarov, owner of the bar, appears in front of Marvin and Bob with his men, they have an injured guy in the back of their van. They talk about the robbery from the other night, demanding his money back by threatening them. Meanwhile, Evandro seeks information about Yumarov and the bar, wanting to know more about Marvin and Bob, as he believes that they had something to do with the robbery. In the following scene, we see Marvin acting weird at home, it turns out that the robbery was planned by Marvin, when we see him talking to one of the masked robbers privately. The next morning, Bob walks in the park with Rocco, meeting Nadia while passing. 
She tells him that he can hire her to look after Rocco while he works at the bar, as the Christmas season is over, and she now has less work to do at the restaurant. At Marvin's house, his sister Dottie explains to him how their plugged father will be transferred to a worse place due to unpaid expenses, and while she mentions unplugging him, Marvin insists on keeping him alive, as he is confident that he will rob the drop bar and get money. Meanwhile, the friendship between Nadia and Bob improves, because of Rocco, but when she leaves the park, the mysterious guy we saw before returns. He praises the dog and leaves, but Bob doesn't feel good about him. Sometime later, the same guy shows up at Bob's door, asking about Rocco. He shows Bob a security chip license claiming that he is the registered owner of the dog. But Bob tells him that the dog now belongs to him, and the guy leaves taking an umbrella with him. On an outing with Nadia, she comments about how Bob is the only one who doesn't inquire about her bruises, to which Bob says it's none of his business. She confesses that she hurt herself with a potato peeler when she was on drugs. The talk ends abruptly when the waitress asks them to leave because dogs are not allowed. Later, Marvin expresses how he feels that Yumarov's men are watching them ever since the robbery took place. Bob agrees with him. Going out to fix some trash cans, Bob finds a bag full of money and the arm of the robber. Bob thinks that it's the same money that was stolen the other night, and so they can return this money to Yumarov. Bob packs the arm, but while doing so, the mysterious guy comes inside. Marvin pushes him outside, but the guy shouts Nadia and laughs before leaving. Marvin explains to Bob that the guy is Eric Deeds, a dangerous criminal and that he should watch out for him, as Eric once claimed that he was the one who killed Richie Whalen. Bob takes care of the arm, by throwing it into the sea while playing with Rocco, but right after that, Evandro appears, telling Bob that they are still investigating the robbery. He mentions Eric Deeds and that he once used to work at the bar but Bob denies everything. He then goes to Nadia to drop Rocco off, but when he mentions about Eric calling out her name in the bar, it creates an argument between the two, which concludes with Nadia leaving in a huff. Later when Bob was telling about this to Marvin, Yumarov shows up at the bar, Bob offers him a drink and the money, he accepts the money, and informs them that the next drop job is on the Super Bowl night. Bob stops by to pick up Rocco, where Nadia apologizes for her attitude. Bob expresses his concerns about Eric trying to steal the dog from him, so Nadia finally confesses that Eric used to be her boyfriend, but after a while, their relationship became complicated, so they split up. Bob doesn't judge her for any of this, and nor does Rocco. She asks him about his relationship with the bar, and Bob tells her that Marvin is actually his real cousin, and they have known each other for a long time. Bob used to be in a crew before, and do bad things in the town, but now he's just the bartender at the bar. Meanwhile, Marvin is looking for Fitz, one of the crooks from the robbery, who tells Marvin about his brother's disappearance. Marvin tells him about the Super Bowl job, but Fitz refuses to do it this time and leaves. Before leaving, Marvin asks him to close the trunk properly, but when Fitz does so, Marvin runs him over from behind and leaves the crime scene in a new car. Bob leaves Nadia at her house, and when he returns home, he finds the umbrella that Eric took with him. Marvin meets Eric in a coffee shop and tries to have his way with him. Apparently, Eric doesn't like the idea that Bob feels happy with his dog, and so Marvin offers him a solution to their problem. Meanwhile Evandro got his hands on Eric's files, and is surprised by what he reads. Bob goes to Eric's house, where Eric tells him that he will let go of the dog if Bob gives him ten grands the next morning, and if he didn't, he will go to the cops and get his dog back, to torture him for his pleasure. Later, Bob visits Marvin and explains that they will have temporary employees for the Super Bowl night. Bob also doubts if Marvin had something to do with the robbery, but Marvin gets angry on this and asks him to leave. Next morning, Bob waits for Eric with the money, but instead of Bob, Eric goes to Nadia's house and forces her to go on a date with him tonight. That night at the bar, the customers arrive as Bob keeps nervously attending them, while also doing the money work. But then out of nowhere, Nadia appears accompanied by Eric. Bob asks him why he is here with Nadia and why didn't he come this morning to take the money, but Eric doesn't give much answers to him and walks out while talking to Marvin on the phone. Later, when the bar is all empty, 
Eric sits in front of Bob with Nadia. Then, Bob hands him the ten grands for the dog. But Eric is not pleased. Instead, he wants to open the safe to steal the collected money, and even threatens to hurt Nadia if Bob doesn't open the safe exactly at 2 a.m. Bob says he can't do this, and then begins to tell the story of the kid named Richie Whalen that Eric claims he killed. Marvin was a big gambler back then, a lot of people owed him money, and Richie was one of them, but Richie won a lottery and was going to pay Marvin back. But for their own safety, Bob had to kill the boy, and he even explains how he disposed the boy's body very inhumanly. Eric confidently says that it was him who killed that boy Richie, but then Bob shoots him dead, revealing his cold and heartless nature to Nadia. In front of a scared Nadia, Bob insults Eric and people like him. Nadia with her shaking voice asks Bob if she can go now, promising Bob that she will never tell anyone what she saw today. Bob simply says yes. As Nadia leaves, Marvin is seen in his car outside the bar, keeping an eye on everything. Eric's phone starts ringing, Bob picks it up, Marvin is on the other side of the line, but both stay silent, then Marvin cuts the call. Bob begins preparing to dispose Eric's dead body, then pays a visit to Yumarov along with Rocco. Yumarov tells him that Marvin is going to retire soon, and then Bob will become the owner of the bar. Meanwhile, we see Yumarov's men shooting Marvin dead in his car. It would now be Bob's bar, and everything would be even as long as Bob puts Yumarov's money aside. Now as the new owner, Bob takes over the place. But then one day, Detective Evandro comes to pay his condolences to Bob for his cousin's demise. Bob says it was an accident, but Evandro is sure that it was an execution. He inquires if Bob saw Eric because he was last seen inside the bar. Bob simply denies. Evandro is confused about all these disappearances, and Bob says this is how it is in these neighborhood. Before leaving, Evandro confirms it for Bob that he knows the reality by saying, No one ever sees you coming Bob, do they? Later Bob takes Rocco for a walk to Nadia. He asks her if she wants to keep their friendship considering what she saw that night, but instead of saying no, she goes to get her jacket, while Bob and Rocco waits outside for her excitingly. This is where the movie ends, subscribe to the channel if you love movies, like and share the video, we appreciate it, see you again.